welcome back to my channel. I'm Valerie Geary. I know that we are partway through the month of June, but I'm here to give you the rundown of all the books that I read in May. For the most part, the books I read this month were excellent. There were a few duds though. I'm going to start with the books I love today in no particular order, and then I'll tell you about the duds. Remember, just because a book is a dud for me doesn't mean that you won't enjoy it, so I will also try and talk about the things that I did like about the books because I didn't really hate any books this month. In general, I don't hate books, period. I love books. That's why I'm here. That's why you're here. So maybe the book isn't for me, but maybe it is exactly what you need. But let's start off with the books that I loved. These are the books that I am gushing about for the month of May. The first is The Echo Wife by Sarah Gailey. This was one of my favorites this month. There are several moments in this book that really took me by surprise. On the surface, it's a thriller about a very ambitious research scientist whose name is Evelyn. Her career is taking off, but her marriage not so much. Evelyn has figured out how to clone people in a way that turns them into tools rather than like people with independence and thoughts of their own. It's kind of all very complicated and only a little bit explained in the book, but Sarah did a great job of explaining just enough for me as a reader to get on board with the story and to suspend my disbelief. One day, Evelyn gets a call from her husband's mistress, and her husband's mistress wants to meet up for a cup of coffee. Turns out the mistress is one of Evelyn's clones. I really don't want to give away too much more than that. I'd rather you pick this book up and enjoy the twists yourself. On the surface, it's a thriller, but Sarah Gailey goes so much deeper than that with the emotional arcs that they've written. And the book becomes an exploration of self and what it means to be human and what it means to be autonomous. Sarah also dives into emotional abuse issues and talks about toxic relationships in a way that is nuanced and powerful. So yes, there were a lot of layers to peel back with this one. It also reminded me in some ways of Dead to Me, that thriller on Netflix. So if you like Dead to Me, you might also like The Echo Wife by Sarah Gailey. The next book that I read in May that I really loved was The Lamplighters by Emma Stonex. It's a one part based on a true story, two parts mystery. You add a heaping tablespoon of love, a twist of betrayal, a pinch of ghosts, and a generous pour of thick fog. Stir vigorously and enjoy this thoroughly intoxicating tale of three men who vanish from a lighthouse one day and the women that they have left behind. This one has several storylines that weave together and several different narrative voices, so prepare yourself to be tossed about on a sea of storytelling. If you like oceans, haunting fiction, stories that aren't always tied up in neat little bows, stories that have plenty of twists and emotional depths, then this one is for you. The Left Hand of Darkness by Ursula K. Le Guin was one that I picked out of my TBR jar for the month of May, and I have a whole reading vlog for this book. I give you a good rundown in that reading vlog of the plot and what I thought about the book. So go watch that if you haven't seen it already. The short version is an envoy from a confederation of peaceful planets arrives on a new planet, Gethin, to try and recruit them into the group, but the envoy finds himself in a bit of a political pickle. It had a bit of a slow start, but I ended up really loving this book and really being blown away by the emotional journey that we take with these characters. I would definitely recommend this if you love science fiction or friendship stories. The next book is a mystery, a thriller, The Girls Across the Bay by Emerald O'Brien. This book centers on two women who were both in the same foster home as children. They become very close. They become like sisters to one another. And one is a reporter. She's struggling to find her voice and kind of get her footing in this newspaper that she works with. The other is a cop who has transferred from the city to a smaller department after an undercover operation she was working on went really wrong. So these two women, Madigan and Grace, they're back together in the small town where they grew up and where they were foster kids together. A woman turns up dead. The boyfriend of that woman is the prime suspect. But not everything in this town is as it seems, and there are plenty of secrets to uncover and plenty of dangers lurking in the shadows. I really love the relationship between Madigan and Grace and how they both had strengths and weaknesses and kind of worked together to find the killer. This one was suspenseful with twists that made sense to me. I'm looking forward to reading more from this series and seeing how Madigan and Grace's relationship develops. The next book, The Magician's Lie by Greer McAllister, is one that I grabbed on sale, and it's a book that I picked to read during my 10 books, 20 pages video, which you should go watch because I'm basically trying to read through my backlist, and I'm sampling the first 20 pages of 10 books that I've had on my Goodreads list the longest, and I'm trying to decide whether to read it or dump it. 
The Magician's Lie was one that I decided to go ahead and read. I'm going to do a follow-up in a few weeks where I'll go into more details about what I thought about this book because I did read it. And the short version is I liked it quite a bit. It has some great character development and historical elements. I love the main character who is a famous female magician. She's an illusionist and she is suspected of murder and she's kind of talking her way through the story with the man who arrests her. I was really invested in her story. The final favorite of May was Tangled Up in Blue by Rosa Brooks. It's a memoir about a woman in her 40s who is a tenured law professor who decides to change things up and become a cop. She joins the Washington DC Reserve Police Force, which is one of the few or only reserve police forces in the country. DC is one of the few in which unpaid reserve officers are sworn, armed, and have full arrest powers. Her motives for why she joins up are multi-layered, and I think that's part of what made the experience of reading this book so interesting is that she's not just there to uncover the corruption or the badness of the police force. She's also there because she wants to help her community. She's wanting her experience to lead to new insights. She wants to be an advocate for change. She wants to understand the cultures that to her are incomprehensible. But she's also kind of experiencing a little bit of a midlife crisis and looking for a new challenge. So there's this tension, this back and forth between herself as a tenured law professor who has been studying the justice system and then now her new self as a reserve police officer who is on the streets. It's a really interesting and well-written deep dive into the Washington DC reserve police and what that looks like now. I found it to be a very interesting type of story to read about. It wasn't always easy or pleasant. The stories that she shares are difficult and sometimes jarring or frustrating, um, but it was good because you could sense her frustration through the writing and kind of the frustration of the whole system and how it's kind of been broken for so many years. So an interesting inside look into what it's like working as a police officer in today's day and age, or at least working in Washington DC in one district because it's not completely equal across the board. So that was my interesting nonfiction pick of the month. So those were the books that I loved in May and now we come to the duds. I enjoyed elements of each one, but as a whole, they just aren't books that are going to stick with me very long and they won't be ones that I'll be bringing up in casual bookish conversations with friends. But like I said at the beginning, you might be interested in checking these out and I would say do it because they were all decent books. They just weren't the right stories for me. Shucked Apart by Barbara Ross is a cozy mystery. If you ask me to describe this book in one word, I would say oysters. If you ask me to describe this book in two words, I would say ah shucks. Okay, but seriously, this book was fun and playful and yes, there was murder, but it was just like a light touch of murder, a sprinkle of murder. The murder was handled fine. It just felt a little bit secondary to everything else that was going on, mainly oysters. It's possible I would have liked this book better if I had come into this character's life earlier in the series, if I had gotten to know her earlier in different books and watched her growth from the beginning. Shucked Apart is number nine in the series and I just kind of dove in head first with it. I did enjoy the main character for the most part. Her interview style and how she moves through the world and how she investigates the crime was a little bit tedious for me, but it was also comforting in some ways and predictable, which I think is kind of where the cozy mystery genre maybe sits for some people to have that predictability, that coziness, that you know what's going to be coming. I dropped this one off at a beach house where we stayed during Memorial Day weekend and I really think someone is going to find it and just adore reading it by the ocean with their toes in the sand. Blood Orange by Harriet Tice was my book club pick for May and it was a delightfully trashy thriller. Everyone in this book is despicable and messed up and made me incredibly furious. <laughs> Especially the male characters who are pretty two-dimensional. They're just villains, awful, terrible people with very little redeeming value. The main character is a lawyer in England. She's a barrister. She works in the court as a defense attorney and she's trying to juggle her job with her personal life and things are not going well for her. So if you like terrible people doing terrible things, then this car crash of a book could be for you. Content warning though for domestic abuse and sexual violence. Next up and the final book that I read in May was they Will Be Coming For Us by Kim Katanzarite. The premise was really intriguing to me, but ultimately the story let me down. For about three-fourths of the book, 
not very much happens. There are hints that something's going to happen, but really it feels like a very domestic story about a young woman who falls in love very quickly. She falls in love with a man who walks into her ice cream shop where she's working with her sister. It's a love at first sight, a very quick moving relationship. Before we even have time to catch our breath, the two are married and living happily ever after. Maybe. The husband's family is a little on the weird side. He has like this extended family and they're all very intrusive and they ask a lot of weird questions. There's an uncle who's always snooping around and maybe stealing DNA. The mother wants the new wife to have a baby right away, is kind of pushing them to do that, but the main character is like, no, I want to have my own life, I want to like teach, yeah, we're gonna have kids eventually, but not right now, mom, please leave me alone. So I don't know, it's just like a few intriguing things happen at the beginning of the book that kind of kept me reading and things that were hinted at that there might be something interesting coming down the line, but then by the time we got there it was a little too late for me. The main character is Svetlana, she doesn't really do much for most of the book. She doesn't have a lot of agency and she isn't very curious. She doesn't like her in-laws and her solution is just to kind of run away and I don't know, she complains a lot. I just found myself skimming to get to the interesting parts. I was also a little bit confused by Svetlana's emotional arc. She gets very upset with how her family treats her, but then by the time you find out why they're treating her like that, you kind of are on their side. I was on their side. I was like, no, their motives make perfect sense. I don't, you know, I don't want to spoil it for you in case you read it. By the end of the book, I wasn't rooting for Svetlana anymore. There's also a secondary plot line with Svetlana and her sister that I found to be kind of confusing. So this was a disappointment for me. I think I just wanted more from the story. So I think that's a pretty good ratio. Six books that are definitely getting A pluses from me on their report cards and only three that are getting a C average. No one flunked out and that is great news for readers everywhere. So let me know if you've read any of these. What did you think of them? Are there any you're interested in reading now that you weren't before? Any that are going to go on your TBR piles? Let me know in the comments. Subscribe if you want more book reviews from me and I will be back soon with an unhaul video that I know you'll love. See you next time.